Greetings, everybody. Dr. Joe Dispenza here. Knowledge is the precursor to experience. And the more knowledge we have, the more prepared we are for a new event in our life. And if we can assign more meaning behind what we're doing, we always gain greater value. So I want to start off by talking about how most people live their life. It is a fact, scientifically, that your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of all the things you've learned intellectually and all the things that you've experienced in your life. In other words, your brain is an artifact. Now, most people wake up in the morning and they think about their problems, they think about themselves, and they begin to anchor themselves into certain feelings and emotions that reaffirm their personality. And since those feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, because that's what emotions are, then people begin to ground themselves chemically into the past. So then they think neurologically within the circuits of their brain that are connected to the past, and they feel emotionally and chemically within the boundaries of those past experiences. And so then most people's personality or their state of being is defined by the past. And if thoughts are the language of the brain and feelings are the language of the body, then how most people are thinking neurologically and feeling chemically are causing them to function as a predictable self tied to the past. Now we can call that, for the most part, our past present reality because once we anchor consciousness into the brain and body and into a state of being then we could say then our behaviors choices the experiences that await us and how they are going to feel will become very predictable and so people tend to think the same thoughts they make the same choices they demonstrate the same behaviors that create the same experiences, all for the familiar emotion that's called the old personality or the old self. Now, this CD is about defining yourself as a vision of the future instead of a memory of the past. So then in order for you to go from the old self to the new self, one of the ingredients that helps you to do that is consciousness. Now consciousness is awareness and awareness is paying attention and noticing. So the more conscious you are of your unconscious self, the less unconscious you will go during the course of your day. Now I picked two very specific times for these meditations. The first thing when you wake up in the morning I'm gonna ask you to do the morning meditation because your brain chemistry is changing from melatonin to serotonin and along with that your brain waves are changing from delta to theta to alpha to beta from your subconscious to your conscious the door to the subconscious mind opens in the morning so if you begin to think about a new reality for yourself you begin to think about a new experience that you would like to have if you begin to contemplate a new way of being and you begin to take some time out of your busy life and think about some future experience that awaits you, the mere process of thinking and contemplation is the building process neurologically in your brain. And so we are going to ask you to think about a future reality that you may want to experience, some change in yourself that you would like to embrace some type of event that awaits you in the quantum field. As you begin to think about and speculate a new future event, the frontal lobe turns on. That's the crowning achievement of the human being. It's the creative center. And as you begin to ask the what-if questions, the speculative questions, what would it be like? How would it be? What future awaits me? What do I want? As you ask those frontal lobe questions, because the frontal lobe is connected to all other parts of the brain. Like a great symphony leader, it begins to look out over the entire landscape of the brain 
and it begins to select different networks of neurons that are connected to the things you've learned intellectually and the things that you've experienced as an event in your life. As the frontal lobe begins to call up all these different circuits, it begins to seamlessly piece them together to create a new level of mind. And as you begin to remind yourself of that future event, there'll come a moment when you'll get a vision or a symbol or a picture in your mind and we would call that an intention. And as you begin to force your brain to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations, you're beginning to reorganize the circuitry in your brain to begin to change the brain to look like that future event has already occurred. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now in fact it is a map to the future. As you begin to be defined by that vision of the future, you're moving into a future present reality. But that's not the end. Because in order for you to move into a new state of being, you either have to begin to experience the event emotionally. In other words, allow the thought to become the experience in your mind. And if thought becomes the experience in your mind, the end product of that experience is called a feeling or an emotion. Or, I'm going to ask you to teach your body emotionally how that future event is going to feel before it occurs. And as you begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion of gratitude or joy or inspiration, of feeling unlimited, of feeling empowered, your body as the unconscious mind begins to believe and accept that it's living in that future reality in the present moment and you're beginning to activate and signal new genes in new ways so that your body is now living in the future instead of the past. So as the body moves into a new future present reality, your biology begins to change because now you're in a new state of being. Once you're in this new state of being, I'm going to ask you to think about the choices you're going to make, to review the behaviors you're going to demonstrate during this day. One day, one lifetime, what experiences await you and how they would feel. And as you begin to mentally rehearse what that future day is going to be like, the hardware program in your brain by repetition nerve cells that fire together, wire together, begin to change into a software program. In other words, you're able to reproduce that level of mind easier and easier each day. I'm also going to ask you from this elevated state of being to remind yourself who you no longer want to be, to become conscious of the choices you're not going to make in that day because the hardest part about change is not making the same choices you did the day before. And the other difficulty about change is that we go unconscious. So then if you're conscious of the thoughts that you are not going to let slip by your awareness that causes you to return back to the old self, if you're aware of the choices you're not going to make in this day, if you are aware of the habits and behaviors that cause you to return back to the old personality that's connected to the old personal reality, in other words, no longer blaming or complaining or talking poorly about somebody, whatever it is, and then you think about the experiences you're going to stay away from and the emotions that bring you to a lower denominator. I'm asking you from an elevated state because you're feeling differently to look at the old self instead of looking at the old self from a lower denominator and a lower level. So that process of being conscious of your unconscious self, that simple process, allows you to stay aware. That process is very significant. At the end of the meditation, once you're clear of that, I'm going to ask you to remember that intention and begin to think about how you would feel if that event occurred. And as you begin to elevate your state, I'm going to ask you to broadcast that energy into the field for whatever you broadcast into the field is your experiment, it's destiny. Then we will move back into that state of being one more time and meditation will be over and I'm going to ask you to get up as somebody else. The second meditation is a meditation for self-correction. 
we will already be moving into different brain waves as nighttime comes along. Your analytical mind will slow down, your brain chemistry will change, your brain waves will change slowly from beta to alpha. And so this will be a simple meditation for you to review how you did during the day. Now, I want you to do this meditation just before you fall asleep at night. I want you to sit up in your bed or sit up next to your bed and I want you to go through the meditation and when you finish the meditation it would be best if you could just lay down and fall asleep. That way you're programming your autonomic nervous system and your subconscious mind even further into your future. And because your brain chemistry is changing, because your brain is changing in its circadian rhythm from daylight to nighttime, you'll already naturally be surrendering into this. And I'm going to ask you to review how you did. What choices did you make? When did you fall from grace? When did you go unconscious? How could you do something better if you had another opportunity? And then I'm going to ask you to put yourself back into that situation and rehearse a better way of being. What piece of knowledge could you use as a precursor to produce a better experience? What piece of knowledge could you apply in this event so that you can begin to change an outcome? And as you begin to rehearse a better way of being, you're beginning to activate and prime the brain further and refine it into the future instead of the past. This is how we self-correct. In other words, if you saw yourself giving a public lecture and when you watched yourself doing it, you were touching your face or sticking your finger in your ear, if you observe that, I guarantee you the next time you spoke in public, you would refine your behaviors. So that process then of going from the old self to the new self and observing how we did then allows us to self-correct and begin to reorganize the mind into the future instead of the past. And then I'll ask you to think about how you would feel if you were able to accomplish it in a better way. Also, during this evening meditation, where you're observing how you did during the day, I want you to acknowledge yourself for the right choices you made, the better behaviors that you demonstrated, the new experiences that you created, the thoughts that you liked about yourself and how you felt. And so take a moment during this meditation for you to celebrate the changes that you made. And that should begin to become the foundation of your future self. And then I'm going to ask you to surrender the whole process to a greater mind and allow your autonomic nervous system to begin to program your brain and body into a new destiny as you fall asleep and the brain will consolidate those circuits neurologically so that your brain is now further installing the hardware into the future and the chemicals that are released that begin to epigenetically signal new genes in new ways then allows your body to be conditioned into a new biology. The process is simple and it's a great way for you to move from the old self to the new self. So I selected these times with the intention of you having the door open so you can begin to program your subconscious mind to work for you instead of against you.